The very breath in our nostril belongs to him. As I've often said, when the breath is gone, everything that we hold on to has no power. She had no child, but she was given the child to God even before she received the child. God was saying, that's the woman. Speak what you believe. And what you believe that you speak will come to pass. The woman with the issue of blood was speaking the end result. She was believing while she was bleeding. Why do you believe while you are bleeding? If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. May you never cease to push. May you never cease to push. May the anguish of this life never shut you up from the place of push. You will pray. And as you pray, something will happen that will turn things around. Are we the righteous? Are you the righteous? Yeah. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. Come on, church, rejoice this morning. Next thing, when the righteous, when the righteous prosper. Shots of joy when the righteous when the righteous your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 1. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 2, we see the story. 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 2 says, Now there was, go on everybody, Now there was a certain man of Ramathim, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroah, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Anna, and the name of the other Peninia. Peninia had children, but Anna had no children. Anna that had no child, what did, he, what did she have to do? Anna turned to God in prayer. Instead of turning against Peninia, who was all out to provoke her. What do you do in the midst of provocation? And I know that so many mothers have had to go through all kinds of provocation. But I pray in Jesus' name, in this short exhortation, may you come to know how powerful your prayer can be. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, And her rival also provoked her severely. 
to make her miserable because the Lord had closed a womb. Provocation have a way of either shutting us down or making us to speak out. I pray in Jesus' name, no matter what provocation you, you face, may you rise up and call on God. That's what Anna did. Let's look at the simple prayer of, of a suffering woman who was longing for her womb to open. Let's look at this prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to verse 11. See this prayer that she prayed. Read everybody. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord. Say with me. And prayed. One, one more time. Not only that, and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Someone shall glory. glory. It's beautiful to know that God answered her. And in answer to her prayer, the Lord blessed or gave her a son called Samuel. Someone says Samuel. It's, it's so wonderful to know that through prayer, Anna's once barren womb bore a son to rescue Israel. She didn't just give back to that son, but that son became a deliverer. Rescued Israel. Sometimes yet we thank God for the positive things that have happened around us. But certain times, even what looks like negative things, we can still rise up and say, Father, thank you for this challenging situation I'm going through. I'm giving you thanks because of what you are doing behind the scenes. There are times we thank God for what looks like open doors. And it's a time to be thankful. But there are times when some doors just look close. And you can still say, Lord, I thank you. That even for this seemingly closed door. That is giving me an opportunity to know how powerful you are. And how awesome you are. As a ministry, as a church. We've had to endure many. And we will still endure many. We will, but we've learned over the years. To learn to call upon the Lord. Jabez was going through what looked like pain. And his name was pain. But he didn't just let the pain shut him down. Jabez called on God. Anna in the midst of her agony. Called on God. He made her to know that truly and truly. There is still a God who answers prayer. I pray in Jesus, no matter what agony or anguish you may be going through, whether you're a woman or man, the God of turn around will turn your situation around. Amen. The second thing we can also learn from Anna's prayer today is that God delights in open hands. Say that with me. God delights in open hands. While she was praying, she even though she had no child at the time of prayer, at the, time, at the point of her prayer, she was already opening her hands to God to give to God when she had nothing in the physical. Sometimes we wait to have in the physical before we offer. Sometimes we wait and say, well, when I have it, then I will give it. Can you believe you have it and then give it even when you don't have it? She was giving it even when she didn't have it. Because God delights in open hands. Say that with me. Look at Anna's open hands in a remarkable vow she made. In that first Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. First Samuel 1 11. Go on. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me, and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Someone shall glory. 
How willing are you to give to God what God gives to you? Knowing that everything God gives to you belongs to him. Oftentimes we think what we have belongs to us. Everything we have belongs to him. The very breath in our nostril belongs to him. As I've often said, when the breath is gone, everything that we hold on to has no power. She had no child, but she was giving the child to God even before she received the child. God was saying, that's the woman. So I thank God for a praying mother. One more time. Which means even when situations and circumstances look at odds with us, we can be proclaiming that it's all going to turn out, that it's all going to be to God. I can never forget my late mother. I've said this so many times of how our prayer informed the transformation that this man standing before you is who he is today because of a mother who prayed. It's, it's, it's normal for young boys to sometimes still do some stuff that look as if, what's wrong with you? But even when things look wrong around me, she's kept on saying, I never ask you from the tree. I never ask you from the stone. I've asked you from God and God you will serve. That words never cease to ring in my ears. She's no longer on the earth, but those words, those words are still working today. Guess who I'm serving today? Him. He said, that God you will serve. Women, mothers, learn to speak the end results. Don't speak what you see. Speak what you believe. And what you believe that you speak will come to pass. The woman with the issue of blood was speaking the end result. She was believing while she was bleeding. What does I say? How do you believe while you are believe? How do you believe while you are bleeding? If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. And she got what she said. I pray this morning, mothers, may the anointing to speak the end result come upon your lives. God delights in open hands. If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord. Whatever you are willing to give back to God, God say, I am more than willing to give it to you. The third thing we can learn from Anna's prayer today is that a mother's prayer can change the world. Say that with me. A mother's prayer can change the world. At the moment when she brought her son for dedication, the anointing of the Holy Spirit came on her that her prayer went to another dimension such that she was praying and she was prophesying even about Messiah. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 10. And see the awesome prayer Anna had prayed. And this prayer she prayed was already affecting the generation yet to come in our own day. Thank God for his holy written word. 1 Samuel, look at chapter 2. And we'll read from verse 1 to verse 10. 1, 2, 3, go. Go on. And Anna prayed and said, go on. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My own is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies. You will smile at your enemies. Because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord. For there's none beside you. None is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken. 
And those who stumbled are gathered with strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread. And the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has born seven. And she who has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust. And he lifts the beggar from the ash heap. To set them among princes. And make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. <laughs> he will guard the feet of his saints. But the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. Now look at verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Someone shall glory. glory. We see, as you consider our final words in that prayer, in that verse 10, after, off, after offering a fitting ending to a massive prayer, she said, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven, he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king. And he exalt the horn of his anointed. I put here, here is the first mention of Messiah. She was dedicating her son. And she was already talking about the Messiah. May the prayer you pray change nations. May the prayer you pray today change nations. My mother prayed. She prayed. And the same boy is talking about influencing nations for Jesus. Oh, I pray the anointing to speak the end result will come upon your lives. I've given this testimony before. A couple of years back, I, I stayed with one of my second elder sister. And I was in her house watching the television one day. And there she sat watching the TV. And the person who was on the screen was late Archbishop Benson Idaosa preaching on the, on, this, on, the, on the television. And she sat there watching. And I think I sat a few, a few yards from where she was seated. And the next thing I saw her say, one day you'll be preaching like that all over the world. The man who has no passport will be preaching all over the nation. May you see beyond what you see. And may your prophecy come to pass in your lifetime. Anna was praying and she was speaking about nations. She was speaking about the Messiah. This is the first mention of Messiah. The Hebrew for the anointed one is Messiah. I put here. Anna was not a particularly strong woman. But she was a praying woman. She was a praying woman. She was a praying woman. She had every right to have become aggressive. She had every right to have become abusive in the face of the provocation of Penina. But she chose not to. When you are pushed to the wall in the face of the provocations of life, May you turn to the side of prayer. Amen. Through our prayer, God showed his great power. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, the A part, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. The highs of the Lord runs to and fro. Hallelujah. 
Many times before God lays his hand upon a man of God, he will lay his hand first on a woman. Because it's the same way that God anoints a woman to be the one that push. Men don't know what is P-U-S-H. No mother ever give birth without P-U-S-H. What does that mean? Push. Push. And push means a pray until something happens. And after every mother in the level but what P U S H the baby comes forth. May your push goes beyond just pushing in the labor world. May you never pray, may you never cease to pray until something happens. May you never cease to pray until something happens. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, let us remember to thank God for the mothers who once push. On the day each one of us was born, none of us seated here this morning came to this earth without a mother who pushed. Some are still alive and some have gone to be with the Lord. We celebrate them. And also we thank God for mothers in the making who are being prepared to push in the nearest future. May you never cease to push. May you never cease to push. May the anguish of this life never shut you up from the place of push. You will pray. And as you pray, something will happen that will turn things around in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, God answers prayer. I'm always amazed how in many church meetings, Majority of those that showed up in the place of prayer, guess who are they? Women. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this unique role God has given you. Because there's so many women who are pulling back from the place of prayer. Please, let nothing shut you off from your place. Your prayer goes beyond just your children. Whenever there's going to be a, deliver, a deliverance for a nation, you will look for a woman. You will look for a mother. What will have happened when God approached Mary through his angel and told her that a son will be born through you? And she has stayed in that place of doubt. She said, let it be unto me. According to your word. Let it be unto me. According to your word. She believed God enough. To stand in that place of prayer. May the fresh oil of God come upon your life. I pray this communion. We're taking this morning. Will be the communion of strength. To strengthen you. To teach your hands for war. To teach your fingers to fight. May this communion be the communion for a fresh unction to function in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From every anguish and agony you may have gone through, may he be replaced with strength in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I pray for those who have not yet come to that place of realizing how important their life is, that God will send his only begotten son to die on the cross. May you open the door of your heart to him. May you embrace Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Wherever you are, I want you this morning to call upon this name. To invite him. And if you have once invited Jesus into your heart, but you know you have become spiritually complacent, may you take up your new mantle in the place of prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you with my mouth. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I believe in my heart. You died for my sin. You were buried. But on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. 
Therefore, I am saved. I receive a fresh unction to love you, to call upon your name. For you have said, call upon me. I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What a great joy to bring you this message today. I trust that God spoke to your heart and I believe that the word of God you've heard will profit you, will prosper you, and will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. For those who have not given their heart to Jesus, I want to challenge you to open the door of your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am, a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin. You were buried. But on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as that prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, guess what? God heard you and you are saved. So I rejoice with you for this new beginning. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured and you can be helped in your work with God. If there's any way I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to write me or contact the number on the screen and it will be my pleasure to respond to you. Well, until next time when I come into your home, you keep on winning because God is on your side. You are destined to win.